In today's video, I'm gonna be tackling the kids' toys and organizing all of that. So I have two toddlers, one is one and one is three. I feel like their play needs right now are very different. As of now, I do have a full laundry basket of things that I'm gonna be donating. It's a lot of purging, decluttering, organizing, realistic systems that can be managed by both kids and parents, small space tips, and people who don't have a playroom. Lately, we've really been wanting to encourage more play in the kids' rooms rather than out here in the living room area. Of course, this video is gonna be very minimalism inspired, and I really feel like Jace has reached this new level of play that has like changed my life. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my Let's Get Minimal series. In today's video, I'm gonna be tackling the kids' toys and organizing all of that. If you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. If you like my content, subscribe, hit the notification bell, hit the thumbs up. All that stuff really helps in the crazy algorithm, of course. So this video includes a lot of purging, decluttering, organizing, and just realistic systems that can be managed by both kids and parents and actually maintained. <laughs> for a long period of time. I also asked you guys on Instagram with what issues and problems you're having when it comes to keeping kids' toys clean and organized. So I'll be answering some of those questions sprinkled throughout this video. Of course, this video is gonna be very minimalism inspired. And I really feel like Jace has reached this new level of play that has like changed my life. <laughs> because obviously in the two-year-old, even three-year-old years, like they really wanna be playing so much with mom and dad and they don't want to be alone he's finally getting to a point now where he's getting a little more independent with his play he'll go into his room for a little bit and like spend time alone and then he's got aria to play with now he's also like cleaning up after himself which is great and he's also more interested now in like educational games and toys and like workbooks we've been trying to do like some preschool work here and there okay so let's get started i want to show you guys kind of a before of how jace's room was i feel like i've shown you guys jace's room so many times and i have cleaned that closet so many times in videos here are some clips kind of showing his room and Aria's room. I mentioned before that I've been thinking for a long time about that desk that is in Aria's room. It's currently in there because that used to be my office space, but I don't use it anymore at all. I never do work in there. So it's just kind of a desk sitting there not getting used at all. And I talked about wanting to like use it for Jace and giving him a little workstation. Meanwhile, in Jace's room, I still had that big Ikea Montessori shelf um, that I was using to store like his bins and toys, but I wasn't really using it for Montessori Toy purposes anymore. I feel like once he hit like two two and a half and especially three the Montessori method Of like one toy on each shelf wasn't really which just wasn't working for him anymore It works better for younger toddlers like Aria's age So that being said I wanted to switch that Montessori shelf into Aria's room take the desk and put it in Jace's room She has some really good new toys that she just got on her birthday We have great Montessori toys that I haven't been utilizing for her just because I haven't had a space to put them all so i really just wanted to have some toys for aria in her room i like that the shelves are low she can actually reach them and grab the toys that she wants i also had no bookshelf for her in her room at all so i just used like two of the little cubes to actually put books in her room now which has been great so that's really the only change i made in aria's room um, but i feel like it's exactly what she needs at the age of one she can finally be playing with toys that are actually like teaching her and developing her skills as a one-year-old at this point so the next thing i really needed to do was go through every single toy and purge and declutter just get rid of as much as i can um, one of the biggest things that you guys were telling me on instagram is just too many toys and not enough space and how do i get rid of more toys like it's just too many toys and I feel you on that. I, f I felt the same way. And that's why I was getting to this point where I'm like, I need to go through all their toys because this is like, I, I'm not even excited about playtime with the kids because I don't have a space for everything. And it's just making me more stressed to play with the kids. That's why I do this stuff. That's why I organize and create systems because it makes those times less stressful and more enjoyable. So I think really at the end of the day, we just have to take ownership over the fact that we need to do it because nobody else is going to do it. The kids are not going to do it. Probably your husband's not gonna do it. <laughs> just kidding, I might be talking to, to some husbands out there. Maybe you're the organizer, that's awesome. But like, we just need to literally sit and go through every single toy. Here's some practical questions you can ask yourself as you're going through each toy. Is this toy broken, a duplicate, or missing parts? Does my kid love this toy, or am I just attached to it? Will my future kids play with this? Is this toy valued or looked for when it's missing? Based on your answers, you can start a donation pile, 
or even start a rotation bin for toys that you wanna rotate out in the future so it kinda of gives them that fresh feeling like a toy is new again. Ask yourself these questions once a month as you're playing with your kiddos and you'll see yourself steadily decluttering over time so that you don't have to spend hours one day just purging. Okay. I'm feeling overwhelmed, probably because the kids are here and it's hard to get anything done with them around the room, undoing things I'm doing. I have a very hard time minimizing toys. <laughs> In comparison to other areas of my house, I think because in my head I'm always like, well, one day I'll have a bigger house, I'll have a playroom, I'll have a basement, and I'll have the space for all these toys. But I know deep down inside, kids don't need that many toys. As of now, I do have a full laundry basket of things that I'm going to be donating. I'm also just like trying really hard to get organized with all these different containers, figure out exactly where I want to put each item, like just what's going to make the most sense considering what we grab. I'm trying to see if I even have enough baskets because I didn't buy too many. I tried to use whatever I had around the house already and just bought like four from Target. Another great way to not have too many toys is to just not buy your kids toys. <laughs> Shocker. No, it's just, it's obviously tempted to buy our kids toys, but we try not to really throughout the year very much because we know that every birthday and every, you know, Christmas time, typically they're getting a lot of things, maybe like, you know, 10 plus new toys. And so because of that, I, I don't feel the need to have to buy them all these toys in between. It's pretty rare that maybe we're like at a Target and I'll pick him something up or whatever. Also, another thing people are saying is like, receiving toys I don't want to receive and feeling bad turning them away. My tip for that is to create a like an Amazon wish list is what we do for every birthday and Christmas where we are putting on the list what we feel our kids need at that time so that we're not getting random gifts that are never gonna be used or just like that have annoying parts to it or too many parts to it or just things that aren't making sense. Send that wish list to, out to your family, out to the grandparents and say, here's our wish list. You'll know that anything they get off that you actually want and need. I mean, that's just how we do it in our family. And I feel like that's really helped us not accumulate too many things that we just don't want or need. After I went through all the toys, I was pretty proud of myself. I accumulated a laundry basket full of toys that I was gonna donate. Um, I didn't feel like we needed. And then obviously I did end up putting stuff in baskets for the rotating system so that I just don't have every single toy out. I know that can be challenging if people don't have the extra space to put stuff for rotating out. Luckily I have that huge closet in Jace's room that has been like such a blessing for us for storage. But a lot of times I'm storing things like in our closet on the top shelves <laughs> or in the back staircase of our building. So you just kind of try, try to get creative of, where you have space um, under the bed, which I'll talk about later. So one of the other pain points that we've had for seems like forever is the reading nook area in Jace's room. He just has so many books and has never had enough space for the books. I had bought those Ikea spice racks that are like so popular. This hack was so popular. Use the Ikea spice racks to put books on it. But realistically, it's not holding a lot of books. Like it is not doing what you actually need it to do. Um, you could probably fit like five or six books in there and if the books are too tall they easily knock out or fall out if like your kid nudges it or is trying to grab something they all fall out like those spice rags are really more for display of cute books if you have a couple of cute books or a few little knickknacks you want to display I really would not suggest getting those spice rags for like your actual kids book collection. As I was sort of looking for bookshelf options, I realized I think the best space saver for books in a small space is a vertical bookshelf, like ones that are going up because they just tend to not take up as much space. Um, but I found one that's like a rotating one that can fit a ton of books on it that I really wanted to buy and it was more expensive, but I could see myself investing it in the future. It just didn't make sense for me to get it now because it wouldn't even fit in that little reading nook anyway. So I did end up finding a, vertical one from like Marshall's that was able to fit the rest of the books that I needed to fit and it just like fits perfectly into the little corner. He's able to actually see like the titles of the books and pick them out and he's been putting them back to clean them up. So that's been helpful because before this it was literally just books like thrown in a bin. Um, but let me know if you guys have any tips below for storing books in good ways. I just feel like if you don't have that like huge wide bookshelf which a lot of people don't have space for, then your options are more limited. So. so a common theme that you'll probably see throughout this video is 
storing things at appropriate heights. And obviously when you want your kids to reach things and have access to them and you want to encourage play, you want things to be at their eye level or at a height that they can reach. So that's what I was keeping in mind with the books, still him being able to reach for the ones that he wants. But there might be certain toys that you don't want them to reach for all the time. So like an example of that is some of Jace's puzzles. Um, some are a little bit more complicated and it's like the entire alphabet is on it and it's a lot of little pieces and I prefer to just have that kind of a little bit higher where he can't access it at all times because that's something, that's an activity I want to be doing with him and helping him out with um, just because it gets messy but also because I want to be teaching him the ABCs along the way and just helping him understand better. So some of his puzzles I actually love to store higher on top of his dresser where he can't really reach and he sort of forgets it's there. So really just think through what do you want them to access and what do you not want them to access and put those, you know, certain things lower and certain things higher. Another nice tip for storing puzzles, which can be a hard thing to store, is just using a spice rack. So I ended up finding a little wooden spice rack from Marshalls, which fits probably like eight puzzles on it. Um, just make sure that the spaces in between each column is wide enough that you can actually like tilt the puzzle back so the pieces don't fall off. I feel like mine could have been a little bit further apart, but that was what I found at the moment. And you can always find those at like a thrift store or anything like that. It's just a very simple, cheap little hack. I was getting some questions on like, what type of organizers are the best? There's so many different kinds out there. You see them on Amazon, you see them at the container store and it's like, what the heck kind of, what am I supposed to actually be using that's gonna make things stay organized for a longer period of time? I think, the chest drawer idea, like having one huge chest drawer where you're just throwing all the toys in. When it comes to wanting to encourage your kids to actually play and play independently and open-ended play, something large like that where everything's thrown in together is just not going to encourage that. So I would suggest having a variety of bins that are different sizes, depending on what you need it for. I definitely have read that and experience that when you use smaller baskets, it's gonna encourage you to actually have less toys, buy less toys, and it's gonna have less of a mess because you have less stuff. So I did have to go out and buy a few of the smaller baskets because I just didn't have smaller sizes. I had those big plastic white bins from Target that I was using for Jace for a long time. Like things like Legos and blocks, I'm storing in larger bins. Things like the little animals and the little people, they're going in smaller baskets. So that's my suggestion. But with me taking that huge Montessori shelf out of Jace's room, I no longer had that space to put any toys on anymore. Like I used to store four of his large bins on the bottom of that and then a couple of his toys on the top. And now that that was gone, I didn't have that option anymore. So I needed to figure out how to kind of restructure his closet and move some of those shelves lower to like create new shelving. So those white bins that carry like his blocks and his Legos, those all went on the bottom floor actually, just stored them right on the floor. So that's kind of like a shelf. <laughs> and then above that, I used that shelf for some of the smaller baskets. Those smaller baskets are a good example of I used to throw all of those things into one large bin. It was like small people plus animals plus vehicles all in one large white bin. And every single time Jay's wanted to look for like one little guy in there, he would take the entire bin and just throw it out. And it would drive me crazy because he didn't even play with any of the other toys. He was just looking for one specific like little person. Also with all of these bins and baskets, there's no lids. He's able to see, you know, it's, it's low enough that he can see it with his eyes, see what exactly what's inside, so he's less likely to dump stuff. So I encourage to not use lids, um, shorter baskets where they can see inside and don't have to like totally look on the inside, if you know what I mean. Previously, I had Jace's vehicles. He's got like this little Mercedes car and a little scoop bike. Um, those were all on the bottom on the floor there. So I actually ended up taking those, moving them here into the living room um behind the couch so you can't really see them but that's like where his large vehicles are now behind the couch is where i used to have like this huge basket of vehicles and trucks of jace's and so i took that and just put it in his room next to the desk so I basically swapped those two things so out here we just have his cars and then i do have one cabinet there that has more things for Jace that I'll talk about later. Okay, so back to his closet. I was getting some questions about toys that have a million pieces or things that have a million pieces that keep getting lost and driving you crazy. This could be a good hack for toys like that, but also educational games and toys that have little pieces, which is more of what I have. 
in the basket to the far right of the closet, I ended up storing things into these pouches, which are great for stuff like that. So I found this 18 piece set on Amazon. It's like assorted, assorted sizes of zipper pouches and they're actually pretty transparent so you can see exactly what's in it, which is great because then it's easy to find what you want. I use it mostly, like I said, for some of those educational toys with like little cardboard pieces, but also for puzzles. The puzzles that I can't stack in like the wooden rack. So like games that come in boxes or even like board games. You can always do this for like adult board games, things that just have multiple pieces. You are saving space by actually taking them out of their original box a lot of time and putting them into a pouch. And then you could just throw those boxes away because the boxes just get so bulky. It's like the whole decanting idea. It's the same thing. If you want it, you can always cut like the label of the box and tape it on the outside of the pouch so you know exactly what game it is. Or if your games have any instructions you want to keep or like photos to how to make a puzzle, you can obviously throw those all in the pouch. So this has been super convenient for us and I leave it, you know, low enough that Jace can access it whenever he wants. So then a Above that shelf, I just have the four bins where I have the rotation toys. Most of those are toys for Aria's age that I could rotate out on her Montessori shelf. And above that is more toys that Jace has that are just too big to fit into any bins, like his golfing set and like this fishing toy he has. Okay, so stuffed animals. <laughs> I feel like I'm more attached to them than he is. He doesn't really play with stuffed animals. That's the thing. If your kid plays with them, I think that's awesome. Like then keep them if they're using them. Um, Jace just doesn't, I don't know, he's not that into them, but I feel bad throwing them away because it'll be like, literally we paid like 40 bucks for it. Or then I think maybe Aria will like them more, so she'll be playing with them. So we've tried to keep our stuffed animals to a minimum. Um, we've gotten rid of a couple of them, but I still have enough that like, I'm like, where the heck am I gonna store these? Like, where do I put them at this point? Because there's nowhere else to put them. I think with stuffed animals, the best hack I've seen is like the hanging, hammock stuffed animal thing but i got creative and started to think of what do i have in the house that i can already utilize to create something that i can hang the stuffed animals on so i remembered i had these like curtain rod rings that have these little clips on them and i was like oh that's perfect because i can just attach all of those to a string and then put the animal arm like throughout the holes so they can hang there or just like clip them with the little clips so that's what I did. I just created my own animal, stuffed animal hanging system. And now they hang up in the closet on the side. That's what I did for our stuffed animals. Let me know if you guys came up with any self-made hacks. So for costumes slash dress up, pretend play type stuff, I used to have just one of those big white bins that I was throwing all of the different pieces of the costume in. And every single time Jace would go and like try to find the one Batman cape, he would dump the entire thing out and it would end up below the floor and it was just so annoying. So I realized I was not utilizing the space underneath his toddler bed. So keep an eye out for maybe if you have some extra storage space under your kid's bed. Um, I have these blue bins I found from Marshalls that I really like that are a little bit more shallow and they fit perfectly under his bed. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna put all his pretend play stuff under his bed. And I just had them separated out in bins. One has like all of his superhero capes. One has the masks for those capes with the little bracelet and then his little medical kit. And then the last one has um, his entire fireman outfit and it's been staying way more organized since I kind of separated out the different parts and pieces for that. Okay, so let's talk about the exciting new addition to Jace's room, which is the desk. So that was my old desk. Like I said, it's an adult desk, so it's a little bit high for him, but I just pulled one of our dining room chairs from here. Um, I have been eyeing this pegboard from Target for like literally the past year and I finally was like, I'm just going to get it. I think it was like $30 but it's a cute little pegboard where you can kind of display a few things, organize a few crafting stuff. I really just wanted a space for him that would encourage creativity. We just don't really have a space for that in our like living room kitchen area where they can like hang up all of their artwork, you know? So on the pegboard, I just put like his little scissors that he's been learning to use, glue stick, some of his stickers, his little workbook, like a little family picture, just some cute little things that he likes. And then I just had a string that I strung across with some clothespins and hung some of the crafts that we've recently made and put like one of his picture he painted up on the wall. So as we continue making things, I'll just be hanging them and putting them up. It's a reminder to him of like 
oh yeah, I can make something today. Like, let's work on something. But I also wanted this space for like some homeschool learning educational stuff. We're not like fully homeschooling or anything like that, but just like here and there, I'll be like, hey, do you want to do like work on your workbook? And we'll pull it out and we'll do like some line drawing or I have a really good preschool one that has like these little matching cards and you could do learning the seasons, learning the colors, learning the alphabet, just little things like this we're trying to work on. Um, so I don't keep a lot of like, the markers and crayons and things that can get too crazy up in the room. I'll share more about where I put those. Um, the room is more like things he could pull out easily and play with like the, and not get too messy, like the stickers and um, some of his water pens with like his water book. So that's because in case he pulls them out in the room and like I'm not in there to monitor, I don't want him to like color on the table, color on the wall, I don't know, God knows what's gonna happen, you never know. So the like messier crafting painting stuff is what goes out here. In our little cabinet drawer, I have a bin on top that is just all of his Play-Doh stuff. And another bin that is his like painting books, his his actual paint set and his paintbrushes and his markers. And like obviously those things that need to be monitored and I need to make sure I'm there while he's doing it. And he's doing it up at the counter space where he's not gonna be able to like destroy the table or anything like that. It's just more of like a controlled environment out here. And then beneath that, I wanted a few toys that the kids can have out here, obviously just be able to grab and entertain themselves in this area, which by the way, they can bring toys from their room out here too. I don't want it to seem like their toys from their room are never out here. Like obviously they find their way out here eventually, but just having them in their room is kind of keeping that mess at bay out here a little bit. So we just put like their magnetic tiles and then their um, kids play food that they can cut and whatever into other bins at the bottom of that cabinet. And then I think they have like their little tool set. So there's a, a few things there. That was everything I did <laughs> to get things organized and cleaned. I feel really, really good about it at this point. Like I'm excited about playtime. I'm excited to sit and hang out with the kids. It just takes away that stress of like, where are things going? What am I doing? There's stuff everywhere and I can't stand playtime. Like nobody wants to feel that. As a mom, you don't want to feel that. Kids don't want to feel that. So just having systems that work for you and your individual needs is great. I think I could have taken everything one step further and put labels on everything because people were talking about how nothing ever gets put back to where it belongs. They can't read. You're just putting pictures of little labels on each basket. I would have done that. <laughs> you guys know me. I would have done that. I just don't have a printer. Anyways, uh, love you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you learned something new and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.